Hello, beautiful fish lovers, and welcome to Puff Daddy Reef. It is almost time for the holidays, and a lot of you guys will be traveling. So I wanted to talk with some of you guys about how I have rigged up my tank so it is ready for travel. Now, the first thing when you're thinking about travel is making sure that these inhabitants are getting well fed. And for the fish, that is pretty easy. Pretty much all of my fish uh, will accept pellet flakes. And so what I have here is I have the Neptune Systems AFS. And I think that stands for Auto Feeding System. And this device here is something that I like a lot. Um, basically what it is, is it's a auto fish feeder that plugs into your apex and it has a little drum that will rotate and dump food down into your tank. One nice thing about having a screen mesh top is that the food just falls right through the tank and into the water with all of the habitants. That is an excellent feature. So we can check that off the list. We know the fish are going to be fed. One more note on that though, well, the great thing about the AFS is that it does integrate with your whole Neptune um, system. And because of that, I can basically set it up so it also activates on a feed cycle. And during a feed cycle, it will slow down my pump to uh, about 1%. So I have the Apex Core pump and I haven't done a review on that, but I do have that installed. So I'll talk more about it later. And then also I have this, um, this wave pump uh, from Apex, so that will lower the speed of that. And also I think it might turn off my gyres as well. So that will make it very static for the fish to be able to scoop up all their food. So feeding, check, that's very important. Another thing that you wanna do is in the sump. There's a few things that make it a lot nicer when you travel. Uh, one thing would be to have your cords organized. Unfortunately, mine are not, but that's always a work in progress. But see this right here? This is my skimmate locker. And basically what this does is if the skimmate cup uh, fills up just a little bit, it flows through this tube into the skimmate locker and store it. So I don't have to empty my skimmate cup out very much. And this usually will last me maybe about three weeks to a month before it fills up. This is a device that's made by Reef Octopus and it is the larger version so this is six inches in diameter and basically it fills up until this float valve which you can see right there it's tripped so I definitely want to empty this uh, before my trip but look at all that skimming that is what you want to find it is just dark black and yucky um, so basically I will empty this out and then my skimmer will be ready to operate while I'm gone and I don't have to worry about it overflowing because that little float switch will set things off. So that's another important thing to do. Also, before you travel, you wanna make sure that if you have dosing containers, this is just utter mess, sorry about this guys. But if you have dosing things like calcium and alkalinity, you wanna make sure that those are topped up or at least have enough to last you. Also, don't forget to fill up your auto top offs. Uh, so that's one thing I need to do here is fill this up all the way. Also, it's a good thing to, uh, you know, have your equipment, make sure it's clean and in good running shape if you have time to. I think one thing that definitely deserves some cleaning is my skimmer. Uh, so that needs some work. Other than that, that's pretty much good. You want to change your filter socks. Uh, some people might even be inclined to just taking out their filter socks while they're away. Uh, since it's less critical that the water appears clear and maybe they want to make sure that there's no obstructions that get in there That's also another option And another really important thing that you want to do if you're using something like an apex like me um, is do a um, a power out test um, On your apex or not a power out but like a, a test to see if the head unit dies and see how your tank responds and so one thing you can do is you can disconnect this head unit from the rest of the system and make sure that everything's behaving as you expect. Uh, when the, basically the power strips lose connection from the controller, they will default back to their whatever default states you specified. So it's good to know um, that that's working. Typically you wanna do that many nights, maybe like three or four nights before you travel. Um, just because usually when you're messing around with the Apex, it's very possible to mess something up 
and so you don't actually have time to know that. So if you're just thinking about that the day before you leave or the morning of, I probably wouldn't touch anything that has to do with your controls um, just to reduce the risk of messing it up. But it is always good to test those power out and also disconnection from the head unit cases. So what else am I gonna do before I go? Well, it's always good to clean things up. One thing that I did not do uh, was scrape and clean off this uh, detritus from the bottom of the tank. I really don't want to mess with that. I'm going to have to clean it up when I get back anyway. And it's not hurting anything. It just doesn't look that great. But the fish don't care, and so I'm just going to be happy with it as it is. So that's basically a good overview. Um, you also, another thing that's nice is to have a webcam uh, so that you can check to make sure everything's um, behaving predictably. It helps you see if the lights are going on and off. I actually really like my Neptune system uh, PAR monitor uh, because it kind of acts like a webcam. So this device here uh, measures your uh, PAR in your tank, which is your uh, photosynthetically active radiation or some, some type of terminology like that. But with that in there, I can know that my lights are working and nothing weird is going on with my lights that can happen during a power cycle anything else another thing is it's typically good to have someone check in on your tank um, even if you don't have a webcam or something uh, if you have a friend or something that will be really helpful uh, one example of something that for me if i were to go for my trip for a period of time on travel if i were to do something like that i would need to have someone help me out to feed my shark because my shark pretty much only eats food that is much too big to dispense with this fish feeder. And so I would need someone to come and drop food in here every two to three days. I'm looking for my shark right now. I can't seem to find him. For people that tell me that this tank is too small for my shark, let me tell you, at this stage of his life, it's absolutely not because I can't even find my shark most of the times during the day. He goes in these little cracks and pretty much disappears. So he likes being snug. There he is. Can you believe that? The shark is like in between these plates. It's not even supposed to be physically possible. If you can see his shoulder in there, he's just kind of wedged in there. So um, eventually, yes, I would say maybe in two years, follow my channel. I'll let you know when he outgrows this tank um, so that you know for your planning purposes uh, but typically, I I'm estimating two years. I'm going to start measuring the shark. I've named him Napoleon. I think that's an awesome name for an animal with epaulets. Uh, if you're aware, epaulets are those little um, things that soldiers wear on their shoulders. And I feel like Napoleon probably wore something like that. It's also, epaulette is a French word for those things that you wear on your shoulder. So how, how fitting is that? So that's his name. Thank you for everyone that entered in that naming contest. It was really helpful. The second place runner up was Bubbles. So I'll have to look up who gave me that suggestion, but that was a great suggestion. And he almost became named Bubbles, but he is Napoleon. So there's one other cool feature that I would like to show you uh, before I close out this video. Sorry, it's a pretty quick one, but I wanna make sure I get a video out. It's busy this time of year, but I have set up my feet mode so that uh, and configured it with Amazon um, I hate to say the name because then she talks to me, but Amazon Alexa, she's listening. And um, I've configured that and you can learn how to do that in Apex Fusion. Um, there's also some good videos on it. I think Reef Dudes, shout out to Reef Dudes. He has a great channel. Please subscribe to him, check him out. But his channel has something on how to configure Apex Fusion to work with uh, your Amazon speaker devices. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's try it. Alexa. Start feed. Oh, shoot, you actually gotta. You have to. You have to say the name of. All right, you have to say Amazon. You have to say her name, and then you have to say Apex Fusion, and then you have to say what you want to do. So we'll try this one more time. If anyone has one of these types of devices, mute it now, so we don't feed your fish. Alexa, ask Apex Fusion to start feed cycle A. Welcome to Apex Fusion. Okay. You Sometimes you can do that in one breath. We're going to do it in, in two, two like stages. Start feed cycle A.
All right. So you might not have got that because I maxed out the time on the video, but there we go. Look at this feeder work. So it just rotates, it dumps a thing of food. You can actually set this to rotate multiple times to dump more food. I think it's an awesome device. And, and let me know in the comments if you wanna hear more about it. So the other thing, so here's the food and all the fish are going nuts. They love it. Where's a good piece? But I've programmed everything so when I do that feed cycle, um, the pumps go off and then this pump basically starts going to a trickle so there's very little water going into the overflow. So that is that. All right, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. Uh, I really appreciate all of your support. We've reached 4,000 subscribers. We're really excited about it. So tell your friends about the channel. Uh, tell your uh, coworkers, anyone else that's interested in fish tanks because I think 5,000 subscribers would be pretty cool. Maybe we can get there. Uh, enjoy the holidays, have a Merry Christmas, and I'll catch you later on Puff Daddy Reef.